remember one day I'll never forget. I was about four years old and I was playing one day and I saw this cellar door open just a crack. Now my folks had always warned me, Emo, whatever you do, don't go near the cellar door. But I had to see what was on the other side if it killed me. And I went to the cellar door and I pushed it and walked through and I saw strange, wonderful things. Things I had never seen before. Like trees. <laughs> grass. The sun. That was nice. Yeah, my folks were very protective of me. I couldn't even cross the street without them getting all excited and placing bets. <laughs> One night, my dad was talking me into bed with the staple gun. I said, Daddy, tell me a story. He said, Emo, I need my sleep. I have to look for work in the morning. I said, come on, tell me a longer one. <laughs> now, when I was a little boy, I hated school. Because, you know, a lot of stuff in school, let's face it, you don't appreciate till you get to be older. You know, little things like being spanked every day by a middle-aged woman, you know. <laughs> stuff you pay good money for later in life. <laughs> Once our teacher said, Emo, what's five nineteenths and four fifteenths? And my brain started to bleed. <laughs> she said, take it easy, what's our common denominator? I said, a fondness for little girls? <laughs> She was, by and large. But anyway, uh, she sent me to the principal, which is like your headmaster. And I'm walking down the hall. I thought, oh, this is horrible. My friend Jimmy went to the principal last week and he's still not able to sit down. So I'm praying, oh, please don't let him find me attractive. <laughs> I sit down, he says, emo, emo, emo. I said, I'm the one in the middle, you drunken slob. He said, I could expel you. I said, you'll have to catch and eat me first. You know, he's chasing me all over. He said, emo, you have to go to the school psychologist. I said, why do I have to go to the school psychologist? So he shows me the petition. <laughs> I go to the psychologist. He says, what does this ink blot look like to you? I said, it's kind of embarrassing. He said, everyone sees something silly. Just tell me what the ink blot looks like to you. I said, well, to me, it looks like standard pattern number three in the Rorschach series, the test for obsessive compulsiveness, you know, but that's just me. And he gets depressed. I said, okay, it's a butterfly then, you know. He says, what does this ink blot look like? I said, it looks like a horrible, ugly blob of pure evil that sucks the souls of men into a vortex of sin and degradation. He said, no, the ink blot's over there. That's a photo of my wife you're looking at. <laughs> I said, oh, was I far off? He said, no. <laughs> and he gives me a chocolate Easter bunny. And I ate the chocolate bunny, and I think, wait a second, was this a test too? He says, yeah. I said, what does it mean? He said, well, had you eaten the ears first, you'd be ambitious. Had you eaten the feet first, you'd have an inferiority complex. Had you eaten the tail first, you'd have latent homosexual tendencies. And had you eaten the breasts first, you'd have a latent Oedipal complex. I said, well, go on. <laughs> what does it mean when you bite out the eyes and scream, stop staring at me? <laughs> He 
He says, it shows you have a tendency towards self-destruction. I said, what do you recommend? He says, go for it. <laughs> that Friday afternoon, I'm walking home from school and I'm watching some men building a new house. And the guy hammering on the roof calls me a paranoid little weirdo <laughs> in Morse code. <laughs> as soon as the men left for the day, I saw they had just poured wet cement for the basement floor. So I, I, I jumped into the wet cement and then I slipped and I fell backwards and I hit the back of my head on a pipe coming out of the floor. When I came to, early the next morning, the pipe held my head above the surface while the rest of my body below the neck was completely covered by the now hardened cement. I thought, well, this is bad. I know I'm not going to fit into the new family's decorating scheme. <laughs> Unless, of course, they've chosen a last day of Pompeii motif. <laughs> so I'm lying there hour after hour after hour, and then my friend Jimmy Peterson comes to the window. He said, Emo, are you stuck in that cement? I said, no. Last night I didn't finish my broccoli and my mom chopped my head off and tossed it here. <laughs> and he screams and runs away. <laughs> so the next morning, I'm still lying there, reflecting on how there's a time and a place for sarcasm. <laughs> And it starts to rain. And after several hours, the basement begins flooding with water. I'm yelling, help, help! Which I wish I would have thought of the day before. You know. <laughs> and after a while, the water starts seeping into my nostrils. And just as the water starts seeping into my nostrils, my dad jumps into the basement, showing he was a complete stranger to Archimedes' principle of liquid displacement. <laughs> So I'm trying desperately at this point to evolve a blowhole, but my dad takes out a flashlight, a torch, you know, and he puts the cylinder part into my mouth so I could breathe through it like a snorkel. So now I'm choking on the batteries. But my dad takes out a chisel, and before you could translate the book of Maccabees from Hebrew to Lithuanian, he frees me from the cement. He said, well, Emo, I had you out in no time at all. I said, well, geologically, perhaps, you know. <laughs> and I guess the circumcision was an extra bonus. <laughs> he said, now, now, no pain, no gain. I said, well, no rhymes, no moronic generalizations. And he grabs me by the throat, says, no air intake, no smart comments, buster. I said, no free hands, no protection to the groin. 